I wanted to tell you about charcoal as a, a toothpaste. So you just, um, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> just dip it in water at your kitchen or your bathroom sink, and you tap it in some little powder, just tap, tap it off, tap. and that is it. Now, there are other companies out there making uh, a mixture of charcoal powder and some clay. It's very, and some have a little bit of flavoring, but it's that simple. It's nothing complicated, okay? Just wet your brush, stick it in, tap it off, and you've got plenty of charcoal powder. So, that's that. Now, here's my um, African hornet. And he's looking for a victim. I, I don't know who he's going to sting. You never know who he's going to sting. He could sting anybody. And he does it very quickly. Ah! Oh, too bad. Oh, and he got you again. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? What are we, this guy's been bit a few times before, right? OK. <laughs> what will mother say? Jargle. Yes. Yeah, so come on over here, front and center. And we're going to make it very easy on you this time. One tablet. Where's the tablet? I think I get it wet. Here's the tablet. I'm going to need a wet cloth to clean myself off when we're done, Kimberly. OK, one tablet. What did you do with the one tablet? I just dipped it in some water. Now, Kimberly had to do this in a church one day. A boy got bit by wasps. We started having anaphylactic reactions, and uh, his mother was very worried and wanted to think, he was thinking about going to the hospital. There we go. And um, Kimberly out with the charcoal, and that was it, taken care of. Oh, yeah, it is bad. It looks like it's spreading. It on <laughs> okay. You hate this, don't you? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Snoopy. Thank you so much, Daniel. So, how hard is that? It's very easy, right? And if you had it with you, you could use it. If you didn't have it with you, you wouldn't be able to use it. So you want to make sure if you have a fi before you have a fire, you have a fire extinguisher with you. Oftentimes. Some of you will get bit on the ear. They're out in a picnic, and somebody gets stung on a hand. And how much easier it would be just to do this than endure crying, because usually they'll stop crying almost within minutes. It works that fast. Thank you, Daniel. Why don't you sit down again? You just want to keep an eye out for these big bumblebees, right? They are, they are deadly. OK, well. We'd like to start off with a treatment that maybe none of you have heard of before. The first time I heard of it was from Dr. Calvin Thrash. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a new Adventist, and I was at Uchi Pines Institute, and they were introducing me to all these really novel ideas of treating disease. And uh, one day, Dr. Calvin says, well, we're going to help you learn how to use a very simple treatment for uh, dealing with uh, sinus congestion. And uh, we're going to use a light bulb. <laughs> And he said light bulb, I just, oh, come on, what next? All these Adventists and their crazy ideas for treating this and treating that. But anyway, it was quite simple. Um, does anybody happen to have a, um, a headache or a sinus congestion? Anybody? Nobody. At this point, everybody's saying nothing, right? OK. So Kimberly, why don't you come up here? OK, so uh, you have three sets of sinuses. You have your frontal sinuses. You have these maxillary sinuses. And you have deeper sinuses. And we're going to use a light bulb. It has to be an incandescent light that has heat. Yeah, fluorescent won't work for this experiment. And you don't want to put your patient's feet in water, hot or cold, when you do this treatment. You want to keep the feet dry, away from water. And let me just come around to the other side. You're going to bring this light bulb up to their sinuses. And the dry heat sometimes will, within, if it's going to work, usually 10 or 12 minutes, you will have 
diffused a really bad sinus headache. It will work that fast. I know for sure that it does because um, I've tried it. Kimberly's tried it. I remember one time our pastor was complaining and finally said, John, what can we do for this sinus headache? His wife was a nurse. They tried the drug route and it wasn't working. And I said, well, pastor, what you do is you need to get a light bulb and bring it up to you. Bring it up to your head. And I could just see him imagining, yes, bringing a light bulb up to my head. And he said, John, when are you going to get serious? And I, I said, I am serious. So what we're talking about is you don't, want to, um, you don't want to leave light spots in the eyes when you're done with this. So you just bring it, lean it back a bit. And where's this? Now, they can't see you that well. So you actually take the, the, um, the light yourself, and you bring it up onto the forehead. And then they can reach up with their hand. And you bring it up. And they can decide where they want it, how close. Got a good grip on it. And you can go back and forth. Bring it as close as you want or as far as you want. And this is the forehead right here, Kimberly. Back and forth. And as I said, uh, if it's going to work, it'll probably work within 12 minutes. It works that fast. Or you can bring it down. And if you want to do it right underneath the eyes, again, right in there. Now, there are some other uses for this. You can also use it for an ear infection. And women after childbirth can use it for, was it postpartum hemorrhage? Is that what it was for? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it works like a charm, I've been told by women, for that issue, this drying, warm, hot drying effect. Now, how simple is that? And how much did that cost? A few cents worth of electricity. OK, does everybody understand? Yes, sir. Yes, is this a matter of heat or some other modality? Because if it's just heat, we could have accomplished the same thing with the poultice, couldn't we? A warm compress. So is there something else going on other than heat? Well, what's going on here is we want to teach you different ways of dealing with the same problem. So we could have used, yes, a warm, hot poultice on the eyes is very, very soothing. In fact, Kimberly will often make me a poultice in the evening. If I've been on the computer a long time, my eyes get very irritated and inflamed. And she'll put one of those charcoal poultices on. But again, in this case, it's a sinus. It's a little bit deeper. And uh, you want it'd be nice if you could have immediate effect. And when you do it this way, you can feel the heat on your forehead. And if you've got congestion there, uh, it works like a charm. I don't know how else to explain it. It really is nice. Again, uh, you'll know within about 10 to 12 minutes if it's working. You can, once it's working, I wouldn't go longer than 15 minutes. Um, and then come back and do it again. If you feel the congestion returning, then do it again. And the same way over the ear. Uh, children with ear aches, you can do this quite effectively. And they, nobody will usually balk at it. Yes, brother? What about a heating pad? Uh, dry. It's a dry heat. You know, I wondered about maybe a blow dryer or something like that. Yeah. But um, again, it's, it's, my point is, letting you treat the same disease or condition with different po possibilities. That's the, the thrust of this. Here's one treatment. What would be another treatment? Thanks, Kim. Well, I just want to share my experience. <clears throat> uh, go ahead. OK, so I actually have done this with a lot of success. When I have a, had sinus, it affects my gums, and it's just really, really painful. And so I just laid on the bed and did it myself, just threw a washcloth over my face and just held a small lamp and just, you know, switched back and forth, rotated back and forth, and leave it on until it felt too hot. Then I'd move to the other side. And it was about, I can't remember, 10 or 12 minutes. And then all of a sudden, it just drained. And it got globs in my mouth. I was able to get rid of it. And it was the end of it. So everything was dry. And I just, I would leave it on one side until it got too hot, and then I would move it to the other side. And I was just laying on my bed with my head in the pillow on my back, and just kept doing that. And then 
all of a sudden I could, it just started moving and it just came out right into my mouth and that was it. Yes. If we use infrared light, would we get a different, a better or worse result? Uh, infrared stimulates the blood circulation and so there's a lot of, you have these infrared uh, saunas right. to be able to increase circulation. Here's another interesting thing about charcoal. It captures and holds infrared. Isn't that not amazing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you'll hear people actually say, uh, oh, it has such a warming effect. And what is, what's it doing? Is it releasing infrared? We, who knows? But it's been do well documented that charcoal captures infrared, microwave, and x-ray, and a few other things as well. Thank you. Now, the next thing we're going to demonstrate is a heat, some heating compresses. And we're going to make it as simple as possible to begin with. We're going to do a heating compress on the throat. Now, uh, you want to pay attention with this because we're calling it a heating compress, but we're going to start with cold water. And Kimberly, uh, why don't you get that picture again, sweetie, with um, some co as cold water as you can. Now, we're, we're putting cold on the throat, I've got laryngitis or I've got a sore throat or whatever it is, and it's so sore that I can't, I, not only can I not talk, which is a rarity, but I can't even swallow because it, my throat is so raw. Have you ever had that experience? I put these on and I put on a turtleneck shirt and then go to work and really nobody knows what, that I have it on underneath. I might not be able to talk but my raw throat is gone. I, can, I can't, I still have, can't talk, but that, that raw feeling in my throat is taken care of. Now when you apply hydrotherapy, you're gonna apply it cold or hot. Now let me ask you a question. When you apply cold, what is the, how does the body react? How do the blood vessels react? They do what? They constrict if, if it's prolonged cold. A short, intense cold, what will the blood vessels do? They'll dilate, the exact opposite. And the same works for a short, intense heat. Short, intense heat will do the opposite of what you think it will do, and that's what? Collapse of vessels. So if somebody's hemorrhaging, Ellen White had a dream of this man who kept hemorrhaging. And they, the, the commanding angel told her to put intense heat. No, it wasn't, he wasn't hemorrhaging. He was, in, he was in a coma. And the angel told them to put intense heat on him to bring him out of a coma. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, in this, when you apply short, intense heat, it causes the blood vessels to do the opposite, and that's contract. So, but a prolonged heat the blood vessels will then do what? Oh, dilate. And the same with the, the cold, prolonged cold, and gradually the, um, the blood vessels will contract. Now, this is all we're gonna do, right? That's it. We had somebody take some uh, leftover remnant cloth and they just sewed up a bunch of these for us, and that's what we're using here. But again, um, you can use anything. You can. This is a ripped up uh, handkerchief, old pillowcase, whatever. Just make a bunch of them up, put a rubber band around them, and develop your own first aid kit so you have it ready when it's needed. You don't have to go fumbling around looking for your materials. So here we have a heating compress. Whatever will hold, whatever you've got. If you, um, if you had to, you could use paper towels, I suppose, or a handkerchief, whatever. So we're starting off with some cold water with ice in it. Kimberly's never satisfied with just cold water. She'll put this in the freezer until it's rock hard, and then she'll put it on me. She likes to get a reaction. Especially when I put it on his chest. <laughs> Especially when she puts this on my chest. It's ice cold. See, she's smiling. <laughs> okay, so just sit behind your patient. Work as quickly as you can. You put the...
and the plastic. This is, uh, again, a plastic shopping bag. Some of you may prefer Target. I don't mind Walmart bags. They work just about as well. Whatever you've got. And basically, you want to cover that wet cloth. It doesn't have to be that long, but that's a good length. And this is, again, some cloth that, uh, if you have wool, wool works quite nicely. We've even used big socks. Socks, leftover socks, where you've cut the toe off. And you use oh, we that. haven't even cut the toe off. We just, <laughs> yeah. one time I did this to him, and I just used one of his socks, just a regular sock. And uh, he forgot that it was on. He went out <laughs> for the day. <laughs> she knew I had it on. <laughs> she has, she has this <laughs> warped sense of humor from her family. It's so from I, my have family. To, I have to excuse it. I'll leave this on all night, and then it, uh, it stops coughing too. Yes. It stops the irritation of coughing. Yes. Now, I've had pneumonia a couple times, and uh, I didn't put this on. I put it on my chest. We tried different things. I was getting weaker and weaker. There was two of us got pneumonia, not Kimberly, but another man, a friend of mine got pneumonia. He ended up in intensive care. And uh, when it finally dawned on me, I, I wasn't able to sleep. And so then we did a chest compress. I went to sleep, and the healing began. That's my body wanted to sleep. It, the healing is where does it happen? My body. My body wanted to sleep. 80 to 90% of all growth happens when there's the children are sleeping. 80 to 90% of all healing in the body happens when we're sleeping. So sleep is a, is a healer in itself. Now, uh, Brother Don, I want you to stand up and I want you to give this treatment to somebody else out here in our group. Why are you calling it a heating treatment? So heating compress is because, because at the end of the treatment, it's warm. I could probably reach in there now, and his body has reacted, and that cloth is already heated up. The plastic keeps it wet, and the longer it stays wet, the longer it'll, it'll stay hot. Once it dries out, it's basically over, and you've got to apply another one. So that's why we call it a heating compress, is because the end of the treatment is heat. And again, as an explanation, the, the cloth is warm. <clears throat> the blood vessels had done not what now? The, they have dilated. dilated. And what's going to come in? Fresh blood, right? The life is where? In the, in the blood. So you're bringing, you're creating almost a localized fever, a very low-grade fever here. And your body says, oh, there's a fever up here in your throat. Send some white blood cells up there. And so it also directs. Uh, white blood cells to that area. So there's a number of things that are going on for this. Why don't you pick out a victim? And, a victim? Uh, <laughs> any, who anybody? needs one? Who has a sore Who wants one just... on them? Come on up before I assign somebody. Come on up, brother. Oh, are you oh, no, 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 I was just at a question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he should go up. We all saw it. <laughs> OK, then I'll include my, my comment in here. My mother had strips of cloth. Uh, Turn around, and face it, face the camera. Of wool flannel, and every time when a kid we had a sore throat, on with the cloth, wet, and a piece of flannel over the top. Go okay. To yes. Okay. This is an old, old, old remedy. Yeah. And you will put it where? Around the neck. Around the neck. This one's going to go around the neck. Could you use it anywhere else? Now, those who volunteer will be able to take this. They'll be able to take this home with them. So, I know we'll get more volunteers now. Only one per family. Another pin, please. Pin. We'll show that one. Yeah. Yeah. Just set out some pins here. You know, the first few times you're kind of awkward, like anything else. It's practice, and again, the idea is that you just don't want to, you don't want to um, leave that wet cloth exposed to the air because it will start wicking cold air. Right? You want it to stay 
Stay well. You want it to stay well. That's it. Lift your head up there a bit. Chin. There we go. You want to keep it away from any air so it stays warmer, wetter, longer. There we go. One of those has a, Kimberly has a package of uh, my wool, wool in there. Toward, yeah, that one. Just take it out and give me some wool. Okay. There we go. Okay. Pray, Lord, that you bless this treatment and yet let the healing agencies uh, begin to work well on Jim. We thank you for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, let's say somebody had a, we had a sister in the church who had knee replacement surgery and uh, we decided, we called her and Kimberly, we went over and Kimberly immediately jumped into action. She said, you go warm up the towels, the fomentations, I'll make a charcoal poultice. She, this was her second knee replacement. The scar went from here down below and where they had, they had manipulated the, uh, the knee to put in the new prosthesis. And the wound was sitting up about that high. So it was, it was inflamed, it was badly bruised from all the, uh, the manipulation. And uh, very, very red. Um, and of course she had access to all the drugs she wanted because her husband was a drug rep. But it wasn't working. And she was in a lot of pain. And so we, uh, as soon as we got into the house, Kimberly had her come in, sat her on a chair, and, and then put her knee up so that uh, it would be somewhat elevated. And she, Kimberly made a charcoal poultice, and then we put a fomentation on top of that. But before we do that, uh, we're going to just do a heating compress to the knee, which we're getting into that mode now. Does somebody have a pretend bad knee? And people can get bad knees for all kinds of accidents. They've fallen down or whatever. So take off your shoe, your sock, and roll your knee up. Now this could be tennis elbow, right? It could be a damaged elbow for some reason. Uh, let's just go ahead. Foot up here is going to go over the knee. So we're just going to use this. Uh, charcoal patch that she made and so this is what Kimberly did and she then applied fomentations but in this case we're just going to apply a heating compress so we're going to use this as the heating compress And then I'm going to put over that an old sock. And you've got a plastic bag. Knee jerk reaction. Babinski. Oh, it's not quite long enough. Now, I'm just going to use a sock, okay? I've cut the toe off. Joseph, you just put your pinky there. Is this going to be long enough? Now we've used it before. Not quite. Anyway, you get the idea. His leg is a little bit bigger than my arm. Usually we demonstrate this on an arm. Or again, if you didn't have that, you could just use a cloth, right? Same idea. Yeah. That's it. Okay, we got it. And let him leave it on for a while. Yes. This is the dry one. Uh, 
Did you put a plastic over I, the wet cloth? I did not. Did Thank you. You put the wool sock over it. Yeah. The, remember the, um, the charcoal had the plastic saran wrap on top. Okay, and I'm not sure if it's going to fit over that, is it? Okay, so he could go off to work, and nobody would really notice the difference. It might be a little bit awkward to, to bend it, but otherwise, if he's fallen or uh, damaged or hurt his knee, he could wear this all day long, and certainly he could wear it all night, right? Yeah. What are we doing? No, we're laying hands on him. Isn't that true? Jesus laid his hands on the people, correct? Okay, so when we touch somebody, we're laying hands on them. Heavenly Father, we know that we are only humble instruments. We are not worthy uh, of being touched by you, but we ask that you would touch our patience through us, give them an assurance of your great love for them personally, and Lord, answer their prayers as well for healing. Help their faith to grow, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And, of course, he's down to his bare chest. And this is what we did when I had pneumonia, only it was much bigger than this. It was probably this big and covered the chest, right? So we've wrung it out. Again, Kimberly has gone the extra mile and put it in the freezer so it's nice and crisp. And you get quite a reaction when you put that on. OK, Nathan, don't, don't hit me when you react. <laughs> there we go. OK, if you wouldn't mind holding it for a second. I'll put this, let me take your glasses off first. You want to remember to do, get your patient ready. It is wet. It's wet. It's ice cold wet. A light cloth, exactly. I'll hold this while you put your arms through here, this hole here. Then you can come back down and hold it on this side where that cloth was. And I'll help you here. You put your hands through this one. Okay. And you can hold it again right here, Nathan, while I pull this plastic down. That's it. And at this point, so you just start from the back. Now you can let go of your, that's it, your hand. And you just come around. Okay, now you can put your hands up in the air. And you come over across one shoulder. Uh, I think, I'm not sure what they used. And this will actually hold it up from falling down, right? Otherwise, through the day, it will work itself down, down, down. And if it's longer, you can actually go over the shoulder twice. And I put one of these on. I put a t-shirt on. And I went to bed. Well, you can also put a t-shirt on. If, if you don't have this, you can put a t-shirt, dry t-shirt on. And you can pin it to the, um, to the cloth so it won't go falling down, right? That's the idea. So it stays up. But if you're going to lay down in bed, that's not going to be an issue. Put a t-shirt on. And I was able to stop coughing. That was the thing that help me then go to sleep. I had this pneumonia and it was a it turned into a chronic cough all day long. I just constantly <laughs> I don't know if you've had that before. You can't sleep. It just nags you. So this this is all it took. And the next day I could tell I was improving. That's that quick. And my friend was in the hospital for six weeks. We could have used something like this and wet it and just wrapped his chest front and back. Again, the plastic on top, 
and then a, a dry, warmer wrap over that to keep the heat in once it turns warm. If this cloth start, gets start, if it's exposed to the air, it will start pulling cold to itself. And it will short circuit this, this treatment. You have to keep that cloth uh, wet and cool thin. to start with. And if it's thin, it will, your body will heat it up that much faster. And it will start within seconds. It will turn hot. And it will stay hot in there. Because your body will heat it up that much faster. If it's very thick and it's holding a lot of moisture, it will take a bit longer. And if the, person's, if the person is already um, either chilled or if he's um, weakened by whatever he's dealing with, it's that much harder for him to generate that heat. And as Don said, you don't want to do it in a place, in a room where there's a draft, uh, where it could easily get uh, a chill. And then you've defeated the purpose, really. The person won't, may not even tell you, and it's just cold all day long. That's, that's worse than if you hadn't put it on. But um, you can ask your patient, is this staying warm? Is it comfortable? And most oftentimes, they will say, yeah, it feels fine. And lastly, we lay our hands on and we ask God's blessing. Again, Lord, we thank you. We petition heaven and the divine physician himself that you would touch this person, not only with this experience, Lord, but that you would cement this idea in his mind because we know it won't be long and he will meet somebody that this can be a blessing to. So, Lord, bring these things to our minds when there's an opportunity. Let us not forget and let us have that holy boldness of being ready to lay our hands on people and in your precious name ask for your blessing. We say this. We believe it. We claim it. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Come on up. We're not, we're, you can stay dressed. This is a dry run. Okay, this is the cloth that he's going to use for the, on the chest. You're all, you don't have to put it in the cold water, Nathan. Just pretend that you're putting it in the cold water. He's only pretending. He's not going to put it in the cold water. He's, OK, he's going to work from behind you, and I'm going to help him a little bit, OK? So you're going to wring it out in the cold water. You're going to put it, you're going to put it on the chest, and he's going to ask you to hold it there, right? He's going to, so take your hands out. You're going to hold that on his chest, on your chest. Then he's going to go get the plastic bag and put it over your head, and he'll hold it one arm. You'll put the arm through the plastic bag. And you'll put your arm, hand back, and then he'll do the same on this side. You'll put it through the plastic bag and hold it so that thing does not fall down. Okay? And then he's going to start on one side. He's going to wrap you, and you're going to pick your arm up in the air, and he's going to start underneath your arm and go around, and then you'll lift up this arm and go around, and by then you can put your arms so he can keep going. Okay, that's all there is to it. And we're going to do a dry run, but obviously, if you're going to give this to anybody, they have to be bare skin to work, right? Okay, go ahead and pretend. You're wringing out. Oh, is he? Is, oh, it looked like, yeah, I guess he's pretending. Okay, on the chest. Now, what are you, you're going to help him. Tell your patient to help yeah, me a bit. If you'll put your hand on either side. There we go. Okay, you hold it. It's kind of cold. <laughs> there we go. Shiver a little bit. That's it. Now first over the head, Nathan. That's it. Over the head first. That's it. He's now you have him hold this. There you go. Okay, that's it. Do the same thing. Okay, very good. Keep going. Start under one arm. Now you can put his arm down and hold it. It'll, if you put your arm tight, it's holding it, okay? Lift your other arm up, come around. Now you can lift this arm up again. Keep going, Nathan. Very good. Once more around. Come up over this shoulder, over here. He's a bigger, a little bit bigger than you are, so I don't know if it's going to reach. It's not going to 
Let's try bringing it up a little bit higher. There we go. Now I'll go over this shoulder instead. Yeah. He's bigger than you are, so. Very good. Okay. Now I'll get a pin. Kimberly? Oh, here's one right here. You're not. Don't pin him. Yes, a wool sweater, whatever you have. Um, the ones that we, some of these wraps we have are 19 feet long. Now, if it's a small child, what could you use instead of this? Well, you can use a shopping bag, but as far as for this part right here, you know what works really well? Is long johns. You put the, you put the trunk over here, and you crisscross the legs, and you bring them around on the sides and pin them. And so everything's being held together. You put a t-shirt over and you're done. Send them to bed. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless my brother, that you'll bring him healing, you'll have a good night's sleep, and we'll just give you honor and glory for uh, these natural treatments you uh, revealed to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Dio, if you want to sit down, take your shoes and your socks off. Both shoes and both socks. Okay, um, let's move your shoes. Let's keep your shoes on here. We're going to do a, a foot bath, and next to the heating compress, this is truly the most simple treatment. It is a foot washing, and for all those Christians who have had an experience in foot washing, they've already know what to do. Only we're using a little bit more water this time. Now, what would be some things that you might want? What does, let me ask again, what happens when you put your feet in hot water? Physiologically, what happens? The, the blood vessels where dilate? In your feet. In your feet, they dilate. So that's going to do what? It's going to pull blood from where? From your head, from your extremities, down to your feet, OK? Now, if you have one extra teaspoon of blood in your head, could that trigger a headache? Yes. It could. That could be all it is that's triggering a headache, is an extra teaspoon of blood. So when you put your feet in hot water, it's going to pull that extra teaspoon of blood away from your head, and it could diffuse a nasty headache. Okay, But you may have some congestion. You may have some sinus congestion. Remember we had that treatment for sinus congestion, the light bulb? Here's another good treatment for that. It will help to decongest your sinuses. So there's a number of different things you can use that for. Uh, it's very simple. And if it does nothing else, it makes you feel good. Uh, you actually have to stop. You can't keep working. You have to sit down, and you have to put your feet in hot water. When I went to Puerto Rico many moons ago, uh, somebody heard that we, could, we were doing natural medicine. They invited us to their house. And the, um, the husband, I think he was 50s and his 60s. And for whatever reason, I can't remember, he was not able to sleep. And he had not slept for a month. And he was just worn out. And we came in, and I thought, well, what are we going to do for this? You know, I know what to do for a headache. This is not a headache. Insomnia is not my, I've never done this before. And a little thought came into my head, give him a hot foot bath, it'll relax him. So we went into the bedroom and I told his wife to heat up some warm water. And so I had him sit on the edge of the bed. And then we brought him some warm water. <coughs> we filled it up. That, was that too hot? Did you check it? No. No, it's okay. We have some ice water just in case. 
And I had, the, I had the gentleman just lay back on the bed. Just like he was laying on the bed with his legs off the side of the bed into the hot water. That was all we did. So, and then, you're the therapist. Some people have poor circulation, older people. And you can, diabetics, you can, they'll put their feet gladly in the warm water, but they don't know that it's too hot and they'll burn themselves. So here's your thermometer, right? So you, oh, you're, I'm the therapist. Go sit down. <laughs> These eager beavers, you know, they. So you lift the foot up, put your hand on the outs on the underneath. And if your hand can stand it, some people are a little bit more sensitive, so you can wash the feet. Is that going to be too hot? Not too bad, OK. So just let the water over it and slowly bring it down into the warm water. OK, and then you do the same with the other foot. Just gradually add some water so they get climatized to it. And then bring their feet down into the warm water. Now, how hard is that? So we did that. He laid back. And myself, the pastor, and his wife just turned. And we had a prayer together, a little huddle. And as I said, amen, he started to snore. <laughs> that is the gospel truth. This is not an exaggeration. Now, I wish that that happened with every treatment I ever did. And you'd wish that that happened with every treatment you did. But probably it's not. And I think the Lord gave me that little experience to encourage me. I was really nervous in a different country, struggling with my Spanish. And the Lord just, you know, all the healing comes from him. And the man slept. The turning point came, as Ellen White said, the person slept, the, healing, the turning point came, and the body began to heal itself. Now, there are, what other applications can you use this for? What would you think that somebody could use this for? For doubt? Gout. Gout. OK. We'd already tried one treatment for gout. Again, this is another application for some gouty arthritis. Again, increasing the circulation. What causes gout? Uric, Uric acid crystals begin to, well, it starts to crystallize out into the, the joints, and it causes this uh, very great discomfort. But you can also get gout in your hands, right? So you do the same thing. Now. This has started the blood to circulate. And sometimes people will also, if they're sitting at the table, they'll have a hot hand bath at the same time to really get the circulation going. The life is in the blood, the Bible says. The number one principle of health is the life is in the blood. There is, you cannot concentrate a health principle beyond that. That is the ultimate. Because what, if, have you seen somebody get uh, crying and they start getting red colored in their face, their emotions are triggering some physiological response, right? Or somebody says something they're embarrassed and suddenly they get a red face. It's the mind is triggering the body to respond by, and you can see this uh, physiological response. So by giving a treatment to one area, you're actually treating the whole body. And it's not only our thinking, and obviously what we eat and so forth, we work together. And so you're giving a simple treatment like this, but it can affect the whole body. It can affect your thinking. It can give you peace of mind as you're relaxing. Somebody's taking care of you. There's a number of different applications. Now, this is the most, exactly, this is the simplest. Kimberly mentioned uh, before where one of our workers was complaining of a headache. And so on her, her lunch break, she just brought her up to our kitchen table, made a hot foot bath, put her feet in it, and let her eat her, her, uh, her lunch. Now, to tell you, we were putting on a program. I was putting a program out in California. And we had a much bigger group than this in their, in their community room. And I asked if somebody would like to have a hot foot bath. And one of the sisters said, I have got a screaming migraine. And I said, well, come on up. Let's see what will happen. And I'm praying, oh, Lord, please. And the woman came up, sat down, and I said, now, 
could we please have a volunteer from the audience? And an older woman stood up and immediately it went dead quiet in the audience. Absolutely, you could hear the pin drop. It was so quiet. And I didn't know what was going on. But this older woman came up and she kneeled down in front of this w younger woman and she gave her the, this whole pro this simple process that's no more than this. And then I, I told her to have a prayer and she got up. Or no, she stayed kneeled and she just put her hands on this young woman and had a prayer. And the woman said, my migraine headache is gone. Do you know who this woman was? The mother of this woman. You don't think that was touching? It was absolutely precious to see this older mother get, da get down on her uh, knees to give her daughter a treatment. It can work. I, I kid you not, it can work like that. Is it, the, is it just this physiology that's doing that? Or is it the science of prayer and the science of hydrotherapy at the same time? You cannot leave out the prayer because it works. OK, you've got this far. But let's say it's getting cooled off. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's a nice. At all. So your hand is the thermometer, right? And so you have him push his feet to one side, one side. And you just dribble in the hot water, and you use your hand to agitate the water so that you don't burn them. And he'll tell you when it's plenty hot enough. OK. OK. <laughs> But if he claims, if he, if he says it's too hot, you just give him some ice water, and you'll, he'll relax a bit. Oh, talking about ice water. Yes, we're done. So now you want to, um, I think I can use one of these instead. Okay. So now you're just going to take his feet out of the hot water. So how long would you do this? I would do at least 15 minutes at least 15 minutes. And people generally, this man obviously that's sleeping in the bed doesn't want to be woken up now, right? So we left, and I don't know how long he slept, but it was something that she could keep adding water, hot water, as long as he wanted to. And anyway, it seemed to have broke the cycle, and uh, whatever the cycle was caused from. So at this point, we all know what to do, because we've done, we've done, uh, foot washing, communion before. It's fairly simple. I like to do it this way. And I just bring the foot up, set it on my knee, and then we can dry it off. And you don't want to set the foot on a cold floor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot the best part. This is, this is, this is the part you don't get in the foot washing. But when you do it, you want to kind of stand back because sometimes they have a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. So at this point, you pour this nice, cool water over their feet, right? What are you doing? What you're doing is closing the pores off, right? The cold closes the pores. <clears throat> Thank you for your help. Should have had you down here doing this. We have some long-term hydrotherapists here in our group, so you, you're, you have to be on your toes, or they're liable to uh, grade you. Thank you. OK. Now, is that too simple? That's just too simple. How can that possibly help? But it does. And then again, you just offer a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you designed us from the tips of our toes to the top of our head. You know every cell in our being, and you have written your law on each one of those cells. We ask, Lord, you'll help us to cooperate with these laws of our being. 
and the laws of your spirit, that you may bless us, that we may be a blessing in our community, a light to glorify your name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, John. Thank you again. And by the way, at this point, you know, I would probably direct them to bed and just have them, or a sofa, and have them lay out. Don't lose the, this glow that they've gotten from this, experience, this treatment by just jumping up and going off. You really want to let them in, uh, benefit to the fullest. Have them lay down, cover them with a sheet, and let them rest for a while, okay? Well, Raynaud's, it, this, this circulation problem, if people have poor circulation for whatever reason, Raynaud's included, then you have to be more careful, obviously. And you can ask the person, do you have any complications? If they have Raynaud's, they'll tell you. And that's basically a circulatory problem. And there, you could easily burn them. Now, the first time I saw this uh, treatment like this was in, uh, in Belize. And the doctor's daughter w wanted to try something besides drugs. And one of the babies was running a fever. And she gave them a hot bath, hot baby bath. And she gave it second degree burns. So you can be, you, your good intentions, if you're not being watchful, I don't, I don't want to put any fear in you because it's too simple. You, there's no need for that to happen. If your hand is, if, that, if her hand had gone in the water before the baby went in the water, that wouldn't have happened. So it's just common sense. You, you've done it a few times, it'll come very easily to you. For those of you who want to go further and make this into a fever treatment, I'm going to have Dio stand up. We're in a room where there's no draft. Now we're, we're going to make him have a fever if he doesn't already have one, OK? Watch out for the water. That's, I think I got it. Don't sit down yet. Okay. Now we're in his room. Go get it. The green juice. Where there's no draft. He's down to his underwear. Nothing else. And this is not a wet sheet pack. All you you can do this as a wet sheet pack. She wants yes. this as a bottom sheet. Want this as a bottom sheet? Okay, we'll use that one instead. Thank you. that forward just an inch. Say that. This is not a wet sheet pack. That's another whole treatment. There we go. But you can do it You could you could modify this into a wet sheet pack and that's basically a heating compress over your whole body. I've seen people where Dr. Agathy one time asked me, come help me, I got this, this agitated patient. And so we went in, we gave her a, a wet sheet pack. This, this lady was agitated. Uh, let me tell you, she was one agitated lady. <laughs> I thought she was gonna start throwing punches. And uh, we, we made a wet sheet pack, this was wet, this was wet. And then we, would, we brought up the towel, the, the blanket and wrapped her and laid her down on a bed. And within a few minutes, her agitation was under control. And that fast. It's amazing. It's very subduing. It's a, so now I've got him wrapped in this sheet. And I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him sit down. Deal? OK, that's it. Got you. Thank you. Can I just get you kind of hump, sit up just a sec? There we go. That'll work. Now, believe me, there are people who have done hydrotherapy treatments a lot longer than I have. They do it on a regular basis. I do more demonstrations than I actually do for real treatments. But um, there are, there's no perfectly right way. <laughs> Uh, you'll develop a technique that works very well for yourself. And as long as you follow these general principles, they will work. And you might feel all thumbs to begin with, but as you practice, as you get opportunities to practice on each other. When we did it in one church out in New York's, 
city, and they spent several, uh, they spent a month, every Wednesday evening, they would all get together and practice on each other, sort of as a follow-up to the program. So now we're going to pretend that we're doing this hot foot bath treatment all over again, okay? So we're lighting a fire underneath him. I got it here. There we go. We're lighting a fire. And that starts the blood moving. OK, deal. I'm going to get you to, that's it. I know the water's OK. Now, oftentimes the sheet will fall into the water. And I don't have one here, but I'll just cut a piece of cardboard with a hoop here so it just fits on top and the, and the towel or the sheet and the blanket doesn't fall into the water. And most often it will if you don't do that little precaution. And I think that's what we're gonna happen here. Okay. There we go. Now you started a fire and you wanna create, you wanna create a fever. Now, what you could do is you could actually um, you could actually put another blanket on him, but some friend, some people have made these uh, tents. They've sewn up these tents, and this works really good. And you can go even one step further, and you can put an electric <coughs> hot plate underneath him with with a pan of water, and it gets really hot. And you might, you wouldn't be using the this, uh, sheet and uh, blanket like I'm using. Don't mess up What's that? Is he ribbing you? He said, "Don't mess up your hair." Which uh. <laughs> one? Okay. So you can see that this treatment can get a lot more involved than just a simple hot foot bath, right? And we are giving him a fever. Why would we want to give anybody a fever? OK. It increases his. It does. What else? What's his, how is his body reacting to all this heat initially? He's going to start breathing a little bit hot more because he's getting hotter, right? And as he's breathing, what's he putting into his, his blood? Oxygen. Life is in the blood. Uh, the circulation, white blood cell count, and a few other things are all happening here together so to actually stimulate your immune system to get, kick it into gear. It, our immune system isn't working all the time. It's sitting there like the fire station, you know. They're not working every single day. The police isn't working every single day. They're there for when they're on call. And now you want to tell them, I'm not going to wait till a fever comes along. I want to create an artificial fever and wake up my fire engine and my police and everybody else, emergency response team. And that's what this fever treatment does. It wakes them up, and they start working. So you're giving him a fever treatment. At this point, you may want to start timing. You, what you can do is you can, you can, if you don't have a thermometer, you can watch his forehead. Most people will start sweating somewhere around 99 to 100 degrees. And at that point, why don't you just turn your, your timer on for 20 minutes? To me, that's telling me he's starting to enter a fever stage. And I'm just going to go 20 minutes from that point. Now, not everybody will break into a fever. So if you have a thermometer, that's ideal, right? But if you don't have a, a thermometer. And at that point, uh, here we go. Can I have a face spot? Where I had just here. Where was it? Here it is. Now, since he's clothed, he's probably going to start getting a little warm. But. Here I have a cool cloth, and I just wipe his head.
<laughs> Lift your chin. He's not that sick. <laughs> Now, you want to keep the head cool because if the head gets hot, what are you most likely going to end up with? You're going to end up with a headache, probably. So you don't want to end up with a headache. So you want to keep the head cool. Now, these fever treatments can get really involved. You can have a Russian steam bath. Anybody ever had a Russian steam bath? Have you folks? They can be very unpleasant. And you'll put fans and ice cubes on their head trying to keep their head cool. But you just keep bathing them. As the treatment goes along, underneath the chin, everywhere, just keep them cool in the head. And when they come out of it, they won't have a headache on top of it. Now, the, you could do what I did earlier. You could add some more hot water if it's cooling off. But let's say that it's gone the 20 minutes. And now we're going to, um, we're going to end the treatment. And it's basically, we end the treatment the same way we did with a hot foot bath. OK, that's all there is. Except you may want to give him a sponge bath once you've got him out of the hot water. Now, you can, you can do this treatment. If you don't have a bathtub, and this is the, the biggest bathtub you have, then you can still give a fever treatment in a hot foot bath. But you could do it where? In your bathtub as well, right? This is just the most simple way of doing it. Yes. 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 You'd simply use a cloth like this, and you would put it over the head like that. Or a bigger towel, just cover him. You can also fold this and lift up your chin, and it would go all the way around your neck into the back. And you want to keep that area. Basically, this is just a short treatment. But for a prolonged treatment, for 20 minutes, you know, after about five to 10 minutes into this treatment, they're going to get, start getting really warm. If you're doing it right, they are going to get uncomfortable. And you just keep asking, how are you feeling? Well, I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable, getting a little hot. And you ask them those questions to communicate with your patient. Don't assume that you know that everything's going well. Assume that he needs or she needs to communicate with you. And then at that point, from that point, you just work continuously to keep that head cool, either bathing it, keeping a cloth on the head like this, or wringing out other claws and placing them around the neck, an ice bag, a fan, whatever, to keep that head cool so that you don't end up with a headache. Okay? So we're finishing the, we're finishing the treatment, but I'm glad you brought up those questions. Those are questions that we should ask. So here we go, just reversing. Well, we got a little bit wet there, but not too bad. Now, I'm just going to slide it ahead just a little bit, Dio. So here we've already seen this part, but Dio didn't get quite enough cold water last time, so we'll do it again. <laughs> It really is cold. <laughs> These people are such wimps. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that on tape, am I? OK. OK. Well, we don't want to waste that ice cube. <laughs> now, when I took these classes, it was very sober. Nobody cracked a, a smile or a laugh or anything. But, um, and when you're working with these patients, they feel sick and they probably won't appreciate joking. So, okay. And I'm going to help a mom with his socks. You are the one giving the treatment. I'm going to be at the end of the treatment? This is the end of the treatment. Okay, let's get your socks on. We're not quite done yet. 
You still all got to unwrap you. Now, I could have also unwrapped him first and started that way. But we're, somebody mentioned a cold shower or a tepid sponge bath, just in case you didn't get enough cold. OK. And try to keep his feet off that cold floor, OK? OK, try it now. I think I'm working up a sweat. Can really? Normally, it's not uncommon for them to be, this, this sheet to be soaking wet when they're done. And so when you pull this off, you wouldn't have put his shoes on. You'd just have him standing on a towel. But he'd stand up, and you'd give him a sponge bath. And so you'd use, it uh, doesn't have to be ice cold water, but again, these claws work very well. Sew up a couple in your house so you have them ready when you need them. This is so you know which, is, which hand you're using. Left hand, right hand, right? <laughs> and you wring it out in cold water. And you start where? Where do you suppose you start? At the bottom. At the extremities. So you start at the feet. And you would, you'd work upwards this way. You go to the other side, do the same thing. And then you do the same thing with the arm. You'd work it this way, right, towards the heart, always moving towards the heart. And then you would just do the back and front at the same time, OK? Each time you're wringing these out. You keep wringing it. He's so hot that these will turn hot very quickly. So you wring them out in the, in the fresh water each time. Then you can either cover him in a sheet and you take him to bed because he has a fever now. And you want that fever to work itself out. And uh, I would also suggest if you're going to put them in a bed or wherever you're going to lay them down, you put some plastic down first. Because there are, in most cases, they will continue to sweat. And they, will so they can soak a bed, literally, with all their sweat. So uh, you've given them a sponge bath. At this point, you could. Well, this is a top sheet. But anyway, you get the idea. You would wrap him with a sheet and take him in and help him lay down, OK? When I had malaria fevers, I would do this. Well, actually, I would um, go in and take, I'd give myself a very hot bath till I got my fever up. And then I'd climb into a wet sheet, and I'd crawl into a mummy bag. And it would help break my fevers. Recently, a chemist sent me uh, an article, some research showing that it's actually old, an old, um, some old experiments where they, they, they um, created an artificial fever by giving, by infecting somebody with um, strep throat, and they got the fever, and they noticed that the uh, cancers were disappearing. That the fever mechanism is a very positive thing rather than a negative thing. And so more recently, this doctor was reviewing this old literature, and he started doing This is just this, I think, last year and this year. And they're still giving, creating this artificial fever by infecting people with strep. But cancers are going into regression because of the fever therapy. But we, we're even smarter than that. We can be able to use this without the strep, right? Without Without adding to the problem, we can give a fever therapy, and it can achieve the same results.